Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to take you through using Google's material icons on your websites. It's pretty easy and um, for those of you who don't know, Google basically provides their own material design icons for free and um, these icons right here are all part of the set and I believe they're actually the same ones that Google uses on their own application. So they're all high quality and best of all, they're all free. Okay, so um, to actually install these or begin using them on your website, um, you want to go to this website right here. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Um, but on here, if you scroll down and find this section um, right here, you want to just copy this link tag inside the head of your website. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead here and copy this and then paste it inside the HTML for this document right here. Okay, so inside the text editor, I'm just going to go up here and just paste that link tag right there. So now we have effectively loaded the Google fonts into the HTML file. Okay, so to actually use these icons now, um, they they all sort of stem from an I tag. Okay, so um, let's make a new paragraph below this paragraph right here and insert an icon into here. Okay, so as I said, we're going to use an I tag. So if we just have one of these right here, okay and then give it a class of material dash icon so we can say class and then material dash icons okay so this class right here on the i tag is going to represent a single icon this is the main structure for um, inserting or rendering an icon on the web page okay so we have the structure to actually specify what icon to use you want to go back to this website right here and then scroll down, you want to choose your icon and then copy and paste the text below the icon. So for example, if I want to use the, um, let's just say the language icon right here, I'll just copy language. So I can just go back inside my editor here and type language into the I tag, just like that. Okay, so now um, the icon has been inserted on the page. So I can just save this now and then refresh the browser and we get this right here. Okay, so the icon is right there, and this is all done in two steps. Include the icon, um, the icon set, and then use the icon down here. Okay, so really easy. Now, there are a few things you might want to do to actually style the icon. So you can make it bigger, and you can um, change the color. Okay, so um, let's go ahead here and actually give an ID to this icon. So we can say ID, and then we can just say uh, BTN language. So we're going to pretend here that this is actually a button um, so we can just copy this BTN language ID and go inside the uh, CSS and add some own custom um, CSS to this icon okay so we can say for example a font size of 45 px and a color of red okay so I can now save this and refresh the browser and we get this right here so we get the red and enlarged icon okay now you might want to also um, represent an icon as being inactive. So once again, back on this website, it does um, it does provide you with a bunch of uh, a bunch of guides to actually use the icon. So um, down here, we can see it gives you a bunch of um, a bunch of classes you might want to actually um, include in your own custom CSS. We're going to be um, uh, basically creating this MD inactive class to represent an inactive or grayed out icon. Okay, so um, it recommends a 26% opacity on the icon. So back inside the HTML, let's create a new class for that. So we can say down here, we can say MD dash inactive and give it a color of RGBA and then 0, 0, 0, so that's a black and then the black's going to be um, an opacity of 26%, so 0 0.26. Um, we can also get rid of this color as being red, just so that um, it's a bit more consistent. Okay, and down here, we can add the class of MD inactive to the icon. So now I can save this and refresh, and the icon looks like it's been inactive. Okay, so it's just grayed out. Now you might want to also take this one step further and actually add a cursor to the icon. So if we just go down here, we can just say, uh, for example, cursor, and then use the not allowed um, value for the cursor property. I can save this and then refresh one last time, 
and now we have this um, not allowed cursor over the icon. All right, and you can of course do many more styles to the icons. Um, it's all up to your own free will. All right, and that is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you later.